What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing some dorksmithing content because I have in front of me right here a Corsair H100i V1. This has been my 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid CPU cooler for the better part of seven years. And up until the release of my Fuma 2 video, this heatsink was actually still working and had been in almost constant use since I first purchased it back in 2013. But right around the time that video's testing was completed, this heatsink started exhibiting really odd behaviors. I was noticing sudden spikes of over 10 degrees Celsius under load. It was taking forever for this thing to bring temperatures back down. So I figured it's probably had a good enough run anyway. So we're gonna spend this time right now to tear this thing down, take a look at the impeller, take a look at some of the possible points of failure on an all-in-one this old, and then splay open some of the tubing so we can take a look at what the inside of it looks like. So let's bring it in close and learn a thing or two about old all-in-ones. All right, so let's tear apart the thing. First off, commentary on the stock fans that came with this all-in-one. They are obnoxiously noisy at full RPM, but they move a crap load of air and they, appropriately enough, still work just fine. So um, I'm gonna keep uh, both of these fans aside for reasons. Now, as far as the physical all-in-one itself is concerned, the way this failed, it doesn't feel like the pump itself was damaged because even during the times when I was experiencing the spikes in temperature, I could still feel water moving through the inlet and outlet tubing. So I think the pump itself was still working. Maybe there's something wrong with the impeller or perhaps there's, um, there's something up with the fluid and there's like a blockage in here. Don't exactly know right now. But in visually assessing this heat sink, and I'll bring this up close so we can focus in on it, you can sort of see, uh, especially on this barb right here, that the rubber has some surface cracking going on with it. It's because it's dry rotting. Now this is occurring at both of the barbs at both ends of the tubing. But to be honest, with this being a seven-year-old all-in-one, that's not entirely surprising to see that kind of dry rot there. But if you have an all-in-one that's similarly as old as this one, this is something you might wanna maybe keep an eye on because this tubing has suddenly become extremely easy to sort of peel back and bend out of the way. And depending on how much of the adhesive is actually left on these, you may wind up experiencing uh, a leak at this point sometime, uh, you know, whenever that decides to let go. It's kind of hard to say, honestly. But again, if you have an all-in-one this old, something to keep an eye out for. But taking a look at everything else here, it appears to be physically fine. There's no punctures in the radiator or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take the base plate off here and take a look at the fluid. All right, all of the fasteners are out. Let's start getting some fluid drained out, shall we? All right, so that looks to be all of the coolant out. And looking at it, it there, there's no like little floaties in it or anything like that. Anything that's in there right now is probably just dust that was left over from this uh, particular uh, plastic container sitting around. But the, the coolant, the coolant looks fine. There's not even like an off odor coming from it or anything. So that's, that's a good sign. All right, so let's take a look at this seal right here on the inside of this housing here. And yeah, even this thing is, is looking fine, honestly. There, there's no obvious signs of damage or cracking or wear over time or anything like that. So that was a really well-constructed seal between uh, the copper base plate and the, uh, the pump top. All right, so let's take a little bit of a look at the copper base plate. So if we take a look at the inside of the copper base plate for this all-in-one, we can see this point right here where it was resting on the copper. There's like a, a little sum sum going on in there, but it honestly that that just looks like that just looks like residue from uh, from some oils that may have left been left over during assembly or something like that. It is admittedly a bit on the green side, but it hasn't really spread to any meaningful capacity. Also, seven years old, so that's actually not looking too shabby. 
even looking at the uh, at the grooves here for for where the block actually puts heat into the coolant there's not really much of anything other than this thin dark line going through the center of the grooves right there where the uh where this gasket went over the top of the uh of the grooves to uh to sort of direct the flow of water so even that's actually looking pretty solid after seven years all right now for the cringy bit that is ultimately going to do in this all-in-one for good All right, so RIP Corsair H100i, seven years of good service. All right, so let's get this section of hose splayed down the middle if we can. By the way, I do not recommend doing what I'm doing right now with the tool I'm doing it with. I know this is a terrible idea. This is just what I happen to have on hand that I could grab. Or, as it turns out, a decent pair of side cutters can at least get you started cutting through the tubing. All right, so we've got this tubing splayed open now. And even getting this like pulled wide open, it doesn't really appear as though there's a whole lot that's uh, that's going on that would raise any uh, red flag indicators for me. Now, admittedly, this section would need to be looked at by someone with, uh, with more experience in this arena than me. This is just sort of because I don't have any frame of reference to work with for what this looked like when it was brand new. But, I mean, nothing really looks wrong with the interior of this tubing. And there's nothing, there's no indicators uh, anywhere else, at least on this section of hose, that would indicate that there was any real permeation that was going on in the tubing. All right, so I'm gonna pause for a moment and see if I can't get this pump top undone, and then we'll bring it even closer so we can take a look at what's going on here. All right, now we're up close and personal, so let's take this section apart now and see what we can see. Man, this pump top fastener is a pain in the ass to unscrew. If you ever find yourself disassembling one of this style of heat sink, uh, make sure you're careful when you're undoing these fasteners because uh, even the even a correct size screwdriver kind of tends to want to hop out of the openings on the top of this and this doesn't uh, yeah that would suck if you wound up stripping out those openings and with that we have the revealed PCB layer on the top, which contained this pad right here for uh, the diffused lighting that went across this. And as you can see, this is just a sort of uh, semi-translucent layer here. There's a little bit of light diffusion on the pump top, but otherwise most of the, of the diffusion for the light that's shown through this uh, came from this section right here. All right, so now let's get this out of the way. And in case you're wondering, while I'm taking this bit apart, this PCB not only controls the LED lighting, but it also has the connections for your USB 2 cable that would connect this with the Corsair IQ software. It also had the two headers for the two sets of fan channels so that you could run all of your fans connected directly to the pump. So now we can lift up, see there's some cables right back here. This is the routing for the, uh, for the SATA power and PWM header that comes off of this pump. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping an eye on these cables down here as you're pulling this PCB out. Also be mindful of this white cable right here. In the event you're doing this in a way that hasn't you know, destroyed the all-in-one like I've done here. This cable is going through to the underside over here where there's a temperature probe. And unfortunately, it's held in place down at the bottom there. I don't know how well you can see it in the camera, but there's some hot glue down there that's, uh, that's holding it in place. So for my purposes, I'm probably fine to just go ahead and break this cable off to get the, assembly, the disassembly underway, but you will wanna be more careful and find a way to uh, carefully remove that adhesive down there while preserving uh, your temperature sensor. Oh, or you can just sort of pull up really hard on it like you're gonna break it, and then this just comes up anyway and everything's fine. Sweet. Out of the way. 
All right, so now we have the pump itself, which should just sort of pull out like that. And now we have a look at uh, the impeller that came with this particular all-in-one. Honestly, like this feels fine. Like I don't feel any grittiness in the bearing when I'm spinning this or anything, but that's not to say that maybe this wasn't uh, spinning adequately enough to get coolant flowing for effective heat dissipation. It, it kind, kind of hard to say, honestly. Again, I don't really have enough of a frame of reference here since I've never used one of these brand new and disassembled a brand new one to sort of compare between the two. Yeah, and even in pulling this off, I'm not really seeing anything that's obviously wrong here. But again, some of these issues that can pop up with an all-in-one are gonna be a little hard to see in the first place, especially with there being so many little moving components and other little things that could go wrong uh, with, uh, with a device sort of this complicated. Now, the, the impeller itself I'm pretty positive is is plastic here, but it feel it actually feels like it like it was built extremely well. And as we can see here, there's really nothing physically wrong with it. So uh, yeah, not really not really sure where the failure was coming from with this uh, with this all in one, but it was definitely a measurable and repeatable result. The toughest thing to take a look at closely would probably be uh, the pump motor right here, just because everything is sort of like press sealed together. And even if I were able to take this thing apart to sort of look at what's going on here, just the act of taking it apart would likely destroy it. So, you know, at that point, what what's really the point? That said, this little gasket that's running around the outside here also looks to be in really good condition after all this time. So, I mean, whatever whatever was causing uh, whatever was causing my temperatures to do what they were doing with this heat sink, I'm going with it was probably something wrong with the pump. All right, well that's the whole thing assembled. So let's uh, let's go ahead and back out and talk conclusions. So there we have it. I have completely, very nearly disassembled this H100 IV one and found that more than likely the point of failure here was just a, a pump that's had it. You know, these are only rated for so many hours over the lifespan of uh, a cooling unit like this one. And honestly, the fact that this one made it to seven years of what was con what I would consider pretty reasonable regular use case on an overclocked processor at all times, that's a pretty strong showing from this. Now, Unfortunately, I was not able to cut open the radiator to take a look inside this and see what it looked like. Uh, I unfortunately actually need this to remain intact for future content pieces. Uh, so yeah, sorry about not being able to cut this one open. Maybe at a later date and time, if I get my hands on some other old all-in-ones to dissect, then that'll be something that I look into. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this round of dork smithing. Make sure you toss a like on the video if you liked what you saw, and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every single time I upload new content for you to check out. I'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.